Let's talk about vocabulary acquisition for studying the biblical languages. Hi, I'm Doug, and I want to encourage you to learn the vocabulary you need for studying the biblical languages. Today we're talking about vocabulary acquisition, and I've been greatly helped in my thinking on this topic by a recent book by Dr. Jennifer Noonan, a handbook of second language acquisition for biblical studies. She notes, one of the most essential parts of language fluency in general, and reading fluency in particular, is vocabulary acquisition. And she points out that students who have only a strong grasp of grammar do not do as well with a basic comprehension of a text as students who have only a strong knowledge of vocabulary. Now, both grammar and vocabulary are important, but our topic today is vocabulary acquisition. Now, in the teaching of ancient languages, including the biblical languages, there are different viewpoints on pedagogy, whether that's a strict grammar translation type of approach, or whether it is more of a communicative language teaching strategy, or whether it's some sort of a mixture and a blending of different methods. But something that pretty much everybody agrees on is that vocabulary acquisition is paramount, and that using flashcards is an excellent way for students to do that. Now, when it comes to teaching vocabulary and students learning vocabulary, there's several, there are several factors that need to be taken into consideration. When introducing vocabulary that's been selected for students, it's important to raise their interest and to draw attention to these words and to understand that they're going to have to learn by repetition. Certainly those initial exposures are very important, but you can't just do a few, maybe as Dr. Noonan points out, 10 uh, exposures to the word and assume that's sufficient. You have to have, according to recent research, around 20 to 50 repetitions, she points out. And also the idea of space repetition should be brought up as well, and that students would be going over these and then give some intervals that will extend more over time between seeing that vocabulary vocabulary item again so that their brain can practice recalling it uh, in different contexts and at different intervals. The creative processing uh, is important for vocabulary acquisition as well, being able to recognize it or to use it in newer contexts, different contexts from where one first encountered that vocabulary item. Also, the uh, retention that students need is often accomplished through associating it with some experience or some image or using something like a mnemonic to tie uh, just yet another strand of one's memory to that vocabulary item. Now, for teachers, when assigning these words and when assessing these words, certainly it's common to use lists, quizzes, and flashcards, as we've noted, but there are some additional things you can do, which Dr. Noonan points out here, that you could incorporate the use of pictures, objects, you could have actions that are associated with the words as well, have students acting it out. You can involve extensive reading in a program for learning vocabulary, and extensive reading is best accomplished where students know much of the vocabulary already, and then they're being able to have their attention focused on those new words. So something like about 95 to 98 percent of awareness of the words that are already in an assignment for reading, for extensive reading, so they can pick out those additional words and start inferring their meaning, learning, even by context there. And words and context is a big thing with vocabulary learning. So students have a lot of information that's giving them clues already to the meaning and also some things to tie uh, to their memory as well. Now, there is a strategy that Dr. Noonan points out in this book called recycled words. And the idea of recycled words is that a teacher might select a text for students to study, uh, choose vocabulary words to be studied there, and then expose them to those words. And in doing so, they would also uh, read them, echo, students would echo them, pronounce those words, and maybe put them in different contexts where students would have to guess the meaning of the words based on prior knowledge. And then teachers could have oral reading of the text that students are involved in where they're using those words along with other words in sentences. 
and a focused word study is another strategy there, even including something like a matching game where students could match up a flashcard that has the Hebrew word or the Greek word or uh, the Aramaic word with a picture or with a description in the student's first language and the students could could have a good time uh, putting those back together there that'd be just another way of tying some uh, some memory muscles to those vocabulary words and then evaluating that word knowledge assessing it uh, in various ways it could be something like a more traditional quiz but it could also be something fun like a uh, crossword puzzle or something like that then a writing workshop is another way to be working on the vocabulary where students could write a simple story imitating an example done by a teacher and use the uh, use those vocabulary words in different contexts so vocabulary acquisition extremely important uh, there are a lot of things that students can do on their own that teachers can provide for them there are some resources available as well certainly students could buy blank flashcards create their own flashcards i had a professor who's got boxes shoe boxes of the different flashcards he made himself for the biblical languages and also for several of the different cognate languages that he studied in his program as well it's very impressive and uh, he's got an expansive encyclopedic knowledge of these things and certainly drawing them out uh, writing them out by hand does reinforce that with the brain there's no doubt but you could also buy pre-made flashcards this is a, a set i got when i first started learning greek you can uh, also make use of apps like Sarigo, which uh, has some built-in spaced repetition. Some students like to use Anki and import uh, decks or create decks into Anki for those vocabulary digital flashcards. Some students like to use Memrise, which also has some spaced repetition. And Quizlet is another option. Now, if you do use a pre-made uh, flashcard set, especially in these digital tools, do be careful because users can create them and have errors in them. And sometimes you can find sets that are done by a publisher of a biblical language textbook, and that's probably safer than something by a random user. But some of the random user ones are good too. Just double check them to make sure you're not memorizing a word that's been uh, misspelled, especially if you're, you're focusing not just on hearing and uh, recognizing, but uh, e but even spelling the word as well. It can be confusing if you have in Hebrew a Adresh and a Dalit that um, you know have gotten swapped or something like that. So just be sure to double check those kinds of items. Now, there are several uh, other resources you could consider using in studying vocabulary. Stepbible.org, my number one recommendation for Bible software, just for general audiences here uh, that pretty much everybody could benefit from. You can generate vocabulary lists for a chapter pretty easily on the, the main uh, website page there. You can also use commercial Bible software like Accordance and Logos to generate some custom lists. You could do a range of verses or an entire book. You could have them ordered by frequency or alphabetical order if you want to. You could also buy books with vocabulary items already. And sometimes you can find um, lists based on these books in the aforementioned uh, apps and, and websites, those digital tools. This is a classic by Larry Mitchell, Biblical Hebrew and Aramaic. It gives you frequency lists with definitions, a pronunciation guide, and index. I learned a lot of Hebrew vocabulary through making use of the lists in this book. Also, Hendrickson has recently published three volumes here, a book-by-book -book guide to Biblical Hebrew, to the Septuagint, and to New Testament Greek. And so you've got Hebrew and Greek here in terms of the frequency lists of 100 or more at the very beginning of these books. You have uh, lists of these just commonly occurring words that you'll find throughout the corpus. So in the Biblical Hebrew one, for instance, throughout the Hebrew Bible, everything that's 100 times or more, there's just a few pages at the beginning with those words, and then it takes you through book by book. So if you're doing a special study, maybe you're doing a reading course on a particular book, you can take something like that, take the book of Genesis, and just seek to master all the vocabulary in that one book. These are, are very helpful for that type of approach. And you could make yourself flashcards based on them. That would be be advisable or or you know, use a set that maybe somebody's 
done in one of those digital resources. There are resources that incorporate pictures. I love this one by Jesse and Marissa Schumann, published by Glossa House. It's called According to Their Kinds, a Biblical Hebrew Picture Dictionary. This is available available in Bible software as well. And so it's going to uh, group them into categories and it's going to put some, some pictures with them. Extremely helpful for tying uh, more elements for your recall. Sawyer so Moranville has Bereshit in the beginning, a child's beginner book of Biblical Hebrew. And this is just pictures with the vocabulary word. He has them grouped into different categories. Here we are in the fruit section the, with the Misparim. And it's a beautiful uh, illustrated book. He also has it available as a free PDF that you can download from the Lingua Deo Gloria website. And he designed this book for students to read with their children, to involve them so they don't have to cut themselves off from their children and hide away during all their language studies, but they could just curl up on the couch and learn some vocabulary together. And those kids might remember it a little longer than the adults. All depends on how much you use it. Use it or lose it, they say. Another resource is Miles Van Pelt and Gary Pratico, a, uh, the vocabulary guide to Biblical Hebrew and Aramaic. This is a very useful resource. It's laid out in a helpful way with all of the words in Hebrew that occur 10 times or more by their frequency. They're also listed another time by their root, and you can, can find them alphabetically. And all the Aramaic words in the Hebrew Bible are mentioned in this book as well, and they are given by their frequency. There's several helpful appendices in the book as well. And the last one I'll point out here is same authors, Van Pelt and Pratico. It's Biblical Hebrew Vocabulary in Context. So here the focus is on giving the vocabulary within a sentence, within a verse. And it's the words that occur 50 times or more. Now, it'd be nice if they had you know, the hundred times or more or something as, as full as this with it, but that would probably be a multi-volume set. But this sort of approach is helpful. And even though it's not exhaustive, it's a good model. So a teacher could take something like this, a student could take something like this and use what's here, of course, for these particular vocabulary items and generate additional things like this as well. But however you do it, there's plenty of things out there to help you get going with the vocabulary acquisition. If you're in a course, of, you need to focus on uh, what your teacher is doing first. But depending on how you want to study, you can work on the vocabulary in your corpus. If you're an Old Testament, Hebrew Bible person, New Testament person, a Septuagint person, whatever it may be, you can work on those frequency lists and start memorizing words that occur a hundred times or more if you want to, or focus on the vocabulary in particular books or within particular passages. Maybe you're studying a particular passage. Maybe a do you're a doctoral student and you're wanting to just master the text that's before you and you're taking a, a chapter or an extended passage or even just five verses, but you just really want to get it. You can generate vocabulary lists based on those things. But however you do it, get going with acquiring that vocabulary. Every bit of vocabulary you get committed to memory and you get retained in your long-term memory is just going to help you become a more fluent reader who is able to better comprehend the biblical text and that's going to equip you for further studying of the biblical languages get going with acquiring that vocabulary